Oh my God, these look so damn good. So first off, let me apologize for not filming this whole process, but what I've been doing is ceramic coating these wheels, and right now they're in the drying process. I just got done about 30 minutes ago, and the ceramic coating I use was, if you saw my earlier video, was the Adams uh, wheel coating. And so far, it's an easy coating to apply. Please don't overthink this whole coating thing. Anyone can do it. The hardest part about coating is the actual prep. And I super clean the hell out of these wheels. Not only did I do the face of the wheels, but I also did the barrels. And so far, I am absolutely stunned with the results. Now, I know you guys cannot tell on camera in comparison to before. And there is a night and day difference. Not only just in gloss, but overall slickness. And uh, yeah, so the reason for doing this is just to make cleaning the wheels easier over time. In addition to the wheels, I also ceramic coated the Brembos. Yes, I super cleaned the hell out of these. And one thing about these brakes is they dust a lot, mainly because of the stock pads, but that's okay. That's expected for big brakes, but pretty much every nook and cranny uh, was cleaned out. I didn't take off the caliper, but I did remove the brake pads. That made um, coating a lot easier. I didn't go inside the pad area, but I did go all around in the crevices and whatnot. But yeah, the front face, even the back too, I did that also. And these are gonna be just much easier to clean. Now with my experience with coatings, please keep in mind, this is not a replacement for washing your calipers or your wheels. You're still gonna have to provide some kind of agitation to fully clean it off. Now, if you're someone like me and you use a pressure washer to clean your wheels and calipers, I would say about 50 to 90% of it is gonna come off just by the pressure washer power alone. Now you're still gonna have to provide some kind of agitation. It's not gonna get all of it, but that's just gonna make everything so much easier to clean and uh, yeah, save you a lot of time in the long run. Now I've seen other people's uh, 18 and 19 STIs in person and you can see how they just have caked on brake dust and these little crevices and corners. I don't wanna be that guy. That doesn't matter to most people, but to me it does. I like to keep my stuff clean unless I'm going to the track or autocross, then I can give two. But yeah, I'm totally happy with the results. Um, I'll have a link in the description of the ceramic coating that I use, which is the Adams Polishes wheel uh, coating, which is specifically designed for high temperature applications. So for the past two days, I've been letting the coating cure on the wheels and calipers. And now it's time to go to the store because I got to grab a few things over there at Wally World. And while we're on that trip to the store, I might hit a thousand miles and I might do my first pull in the STI. All right, so we're gonna test out the beating action of the Adam ceramic coating. These are no longer clean. I've been driving the car around for a few days now, and we just wanna see how good the water beating action is. As you can see, there's a little bit of brake dust on there. Not too bad, but it's not as bad as it usually would, to be honest with you, because these brake pads have known to dust a lot. I'm actually planning on changing out the brake pads, but I'm still not sure yet if I wanna spend a couple hundred dollars just on brake pads to get less dust. Um, but let me pull the hose out and let's check it out. Check it out, not bad I must say. Um, so now let me take the blower and blow all this water off. Not bad I must say. Hmm, looks like this stuff really works. Oh, that new car smell, gotta love it. So our mileage right now should be around 900-ish something. So let's see what we're at. 977. We might not hit it on this trip. Let the car warm up a little bit. And off we go to the store. Now, when I do the first pull in the STI, I will admit I don't expect to be wowed because I'm pretty familiar in what an, a stock STI feels like as far as acceleration goes. All right, 
right, so we're here just cruising down the highway and for some reason, gas mileage has been absolutely horrid. See, indicated 18.3 miles a gallon. And yeah, I, this thing has barely hit any boost at all and has not gone over 4,000 RPM, but that's just a price to pay for having an STI, I guess. Made it to good old Wally World. Great, here we go. Turn that off. Off to the store, I'll be right back. All right, back from the store. So doing some research online, I'm about to hit a thousand miles and uh, a little bit of mixed uh, opinions on whether I should change my oil at a thousand miles. Some say don't even worry about it. Some say yes, you wanna get that factory fill oil out of there because it sucks, because it shears down to a 20 weight oil. I don't know yet. I'm gonna do a little bit more research and I'm gonna see if I'm gonna change the oil or not. All right, we're at 999. Let's go ahead and do this. my way home and I just did two pulls as you guys just saw and I'm gonna be totally blunt with you guys that kind of felt a little underwhelming yes my old WRX would wax this in a straight line not even close is faster than a full bolt-on E85 WRX even with a big turbo and I'm sorry to say not even close you guys are high all right so there it is first pools and the STI and to be perfectly honest with you it's pretty much what I expected with an STI now in comparison to my WRX I know it's not a fair comparison to compare a stock car to a modified car but yes this is significantly slower than my old WRX which was full bolt-ons and E85 but the way this car handles the way this car drives almost makes up for the lack in power so in stock form I from what I'm reading the stock tune makes around 250 and 260 wheel horsepower which is way off um, from the old WRX, which made about 380 to 400 wheel horsepower, depending on the dyno and the uh, environmental factors. But anyways, that is it. Um, even with the lack of power, I'm still overall happy with the way the car drives. Eventually, yes, power mods will come, but as of right now, I'm just enjoying the way the car is from the factory. And that's just the honest truth. Now I do have the access port. It's actually sitting in my glove box right now. I'm still contemplating on whether to install it, to install the OTS maps, but a lot of you guys saying it's not even worth it. Just wait till you get your full bolt-ons and uh, go ahead and do a pro tune. I might just do that, um, but just for shits and giggles, I might just try out the uh, OTS stage one map. I don't know, what do you guys think? Please comment down below. Um, but like I said, I'm enjoying just the way the car is from the factory. There's really nothing wrong with it. It's more power than most people will ever need on the road, except if you're trying to do roll races with Mustang and Camaros. Otherwise, forget about it. You're going to lose. Like I said, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Any recommendations you have for modifying uh, the STI for power. When I do modify the STI, it might not be horsepower mods first. Yes, that is correct. It might disappoint you guys, but it is what it is. I have my way of modifying the STI and I've made a decision and uh, we'll save that for another video. Talk to you guys later. Peace out. I'm here to get what I came for An open invitation to bring slaughter I bring precipitations and clean water Since a teen I was deemed a supreme author You should feel what I came in this game for You could keep your bad bitch in your Range Rover I drew up the blueprint for the takeover Made a couple little flips, now the game over Tell these niggas don't play with me I done seen them switch they playing up from A to C